free will is, is I think, I agree, I think someone said this. Um, it's not just, there are definitional semantic issues that we can talk about, whether it's one term or another, but there is then at the end of the day some practical implication of responsibility, legal responsibility. And presumably consciousness has some moral responsibilities or implications attached to it. Not only we are conscious and therefore we should be blamed for doing bad things, but it's implicit in what Terry says, at where does the animal rights uh, uh, question come down here? Uh, what is the program, since I don't know the answer, what should our research program be to decide what rights we give to what beings on the basis of how they think? The organization of the brain, even though it doesn't look like yours or mine, basically is laid out the same way. Visual system doesn't have, a, there's not a cortex in the same sense, but, uh, and the fish makes a whole set of behavioral decisions. They're quicker, they're slower, they're more automatic, um, but you can train fish to do interesting yeah. things. Um, they can, they obviously can learn, in fact, we now know that their, their learning by operant capabilities is as good as yours and mine. Um, and so, in all of those senses... Can we reason with them? No, absolutely not. There's also a paper on, there's also a paper on the dimensions of personality in fish. Huh? Right. Oh, really? So there's, 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 a, there's a paper with neurotic guppies and conscientious guppies. All oh, right, right. The Myers Briggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to make the distinction between agents and patients in this yeah. case. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I wouldn't make any claim that, that fishes are moral agents or anything like it. We can't um, blame them. Uh, but they're clearly, I think they're clearly more patients. They suffer. Uh, and my sense is that we we always attribute some level of moral decision when, when suffering is involved. Are you vegetarian? Uh, no, I'm not. But I've killed a lot of animals. And you're okay <laughs> with killing animals in the future? No, no. I've st stopped killing monkeys. But, but you <laughs> eat them. <laughs> no, I don't eat the monkeys in particular. But, but you eat animals. Yes, I do. Absolutely. And For you lunch. think it's morally consistent? Uh, morally consistent, yeah. Now, so here's the thing. I, I don't think there's a nice, neat dividing line. Um, and in fact, uh, so, sort of like Don's parents, um, you know, I was perfectly okay to do monkey surgeries in which they die at the end of the process uh, for years and years because I had sort of been balancing and worrying about, you know, what are the consequences, what are the good, balance the good against the bad and the disease stuff like that. Um, I couldn't go back to doing it. Um, so it's not, I didn't see a nice, neat, clear white line that said, I'm crossing this line or not. Uh, I, I if think that, that line philosophically changed. there won't be, but then legally there has to be. So oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. have to do the best we can. Right, so I've never done it on chimpanzees, and I don't think I ever would have. And would you universalize uh, this behavior? Would you make it illegal? Which one? You, you pick whichever one is most interesting. Well, so with, with I mean, Dan and I were at an interesting conference years ago in which we were struggling with the problem of transplantation. I spent you know my career doing a lot of neural transplantation. About you know what what happens if I put chimpanzee neurons into human brains? How or many vice versa, or vice versa? Which was the really interesting. Yeah. Case. The question is you know when do we cross a moral line? It was actually very difficult to make that decision. Um, we, we struggled, it's a whole group of us struggled with this, trying to make sense of it. And I think, I think that kind of moral decision, it's, it's, it's this big gray area.